Good evening, everyone. Once again, we want to welcome you to another Community Empowerment Hour. My name is Maury Munchen, and I'll be one of the hosts this evening, along with Miss Terry and Miss Lydiane, that will be joining a little bit later in the program. So without further, further ado, I am going to turn the program over to Miss Lydiane. It's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I want to thank God for this evening. I want to thank God for another cooking demo. The last time I know many of us enjoy uh, the recipe of our chef, Chef Terry, and she did a wonderful job. We asked questions. And today is another secret, recipe secret that she's bringing up. So uh, she said comfort food. <laughs> and I asked her, sister, what is comfort food? You will just discover it. It is mwah. So we, we are going to first look at the video after that sister Terry we uh, introduce, or no, she will first introduce, give a word of introduction before the video. Sister Terry, are you there? Yes, I'm here and very happy to be here again with you guys. Okay. So um, Sister Lydia and asked what is comfort food? You may be very well uh, asking that same question yourself. And um, comfort food is basically what the name uh, suggests. It is food that is, when consumed, provides feelings of like well-being, contentment, and consolation. They're comforting, they're warming, they make you happy. Comforting, comfort food is uh, food that's also typically very high in sugar or carbs and, and is associated with home cooking. Um, and it's associated with very fond childhood memories. It's, um, they, the dishes that comprise comfort food often make appearances during family holidays, such as Christmas and Thanksgiving. And it is connected um, generally to one's unique cultural um, background. An example of that would be something like, um, um, for instance, um, every state, I should say, has a comfort food. And even though you may have never lived in that state, you may recognize some of these uh, dishes. I'm just gonna give you a quick example. Uh, Alabama pecan pie. Um, and what about Mississippi mud pie? Or Georgia peach cobbler. Now, you may never have lived on any uh, in any of these states, but these are things that um, are probably familiar to each one of you. And um, whatever state they represent, as you can see what they have in common are high calories. And um, this is maybe part of the reason why they, you know, they're considered comforting because the high concentration of carbohydrates tend to make, um, release endorphins so that you feel sleepy and drowsy and comforted. One comfort dish that is known from the East Coast to the West Coast and has many variations in terms of uh, not only of the list of ingredients, but how it's made is macaroni and cheese. And what do you call it? Macaroni and cheese, macaroni pie, macaroni cheese. This casserole is typically a dish of cooked macaroni pasta, and a cheese sauce. Its well-known dish is believed to be first debuted in a medieval English cookbook in the 14th century and has graced the, to the tables um, around the world ever since. And today I'll be demonstrating a plant-based, healthier version that is economical, nutri nutritionally dense, and that you can be proud and confident to serve to your family. It's tasty, company, low fat, yet it hits all the right culinary notes to satisfy the most discerning connoisseur. In addition, we'll be serving a plant-based fried fish, which will satisfy you whether you are longing for the crunch of something fried or the taste of something from the sea. And we'll round out our comfort 
comforting cold weather meal with something sweet and decadent, but won't have you breaking the scales. So I hope you are, um, I know you'll be satisfied if you try these dishes and I hope that you have your pen and pen, uh, paper available so you can take notes and we'll be back later on to ask uh, and answer any questions you might have. As usual, all recipes are available simply by emailing me and I will send them out to you promptly. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to our kitchen. I'm very happy uh, to have you join us again today. And with me in the kitchen is our, our friend and my sister, Stiletti Ann. And um, today, I don't know where, what part of the country you're uh, filming or watching this from, but in this part of the country, the days are starting to get a little shorter and the night's cooler. And that brought me to mind, uh, got me thinking about comfort foods. And one of the most famous and most iconic comfort foods for this area is macaroni and cheese. And for those of us who are vegans, I wanted to present a recipe for macaroni and cheese that would be something that is affordable, easily prepared, and has ingredients that are found in anyone's pantry. The most common, two most common recipes for mac and cheese, vegan macaroni and cheese, include things such as raw uh, cashew nuts or soy milk. Now, if you have a problem with either nuts or soy, then that doesn't leave you very many options. But I have um, used my own creativity and the help of other chefs to come up with a recipe that is uh, not only rivals this um, shack cashew and soy milk based recipes, but also uh, in some aspects, in my opinion, are superior. And this uh, morning, I'm going to um, share with you the basic recipe and I say basic recipe because I want to encourage you to be creative in your cooking as well and I never follow recipes I like to make up my own and I encourage you to do the same to adjust it to your taste and your family's taste and this recipe is going to consist of only vegetables and the vegetables that you choose to use will be according to your own taste I'm going to use the ones that I originally um, originally um, created, but understanding that there are other choices. So our macaroni and cheese is going to consist of 100% whole wheat pasta. We're using a half cup of onions, and this recipe is based on uh, serving size for about six people, and it's going to make you uh, about four and a half cups, which is roughly uh, eight servings of mac and cheese cooked. So we're using about a half cup of onions and um, one small potato, which is, is equivalent also to about a half a cup, and one medium carrot, which is also roughly about a half a cup of carrots. You're going to chop all of these vegetables till they're about the, about the same size, and you're going to take, and also we're using two cloves of garlic. So with that, uh, we're going to take all these vegetables and we want to put all these vegetables in plain water. And you're going to boil these vegetables until they're nice and tender. So you want to put your onions in as well and your cloves of garlic. Now, you want to move all these things. And I didn't put the onions in now, but you will want to do that when you're cooking your. Um, and so you want to put those in and boil them until they're tender. You're going to drain off the liquid, but you want to reserve roughly one cup of the liquid. And that's to use when you're cooking. Once the, the vegetables are cooked, you are going to want to transfer the cooked vegetables into a blender, such as what I have here. Now, you can use an immersion blender or a regular food processor. The, I do recommend if you don't have a neutral type uh, bullet, uh, blender and you only have the food processor, you use it, but you need to run it longer and you probably need to use, uh, adjust your recipe some. 
because the advantage to using the immersion blender and or the neutral bullet is because the these blenders will allow the finished product to be smoother and much creamier. So you're going to put everything in along with all the other ingredients which consist of um, uh, nutritional yeast flakes, uh, your mirror of spices, the spices I'm using today are mustard powder, garlic powder, onion powder, turmeric, and, um, and uh, paprika. You're also going to put in about two tablespoons of the um, full fat coconut cream. Now, I do recommend that you use the Thai kitchen. Now, I don't usually recommend brands, but in this case I do because the Thai kitchen uh, will have a nice creamy texture, which is what you're looking for in making your uh, mac and cheese. So you're going to put all that along with some salt and one half of an avocado. A small, if you're using a small avocado, you can use a uh, whole one. But for a medium to a large avocado, you need only half. Um, and you're going to put all that into the blender. And just for the sake of, because this is fat, you're going to blend this up. You only let it blend longer than this. I'm just doing this now because we've already blended this once and we don't need to blend it again. Um, but you want to blend it until it's completely smooth. I have some that I prepared earlier, and I want to show you how smooth and creamy that is. That is your cheese sauce. It looks lovely, and it smells already like cheese. So you want to get all your goodness out of there. And this together the, will make you roughly four cups of sauce, which will be more than enough for what you need. And what I like to do is, uh, you could pour this directly onto your pasta, but because I want to make sure that every every piece of pasta is sufficiently coated and has this goodness, it is yummy and ready to be eaten like it is. But I like to spend some time with it in the oven because I'm going to um, put the topping on it. Now, with my pasta, I like to put it into my pan, into a pot, and then add the sauce to it. That sauce is yummy, and it looks delicious. It smells delicious, too. Oh, I should tell you also, uh, before you blend it up, you want to add to your blender an additional two cloves of garlic and about a quarter cup of, I don't know if you can see, that. I'm going to try to turn it so you can see it. Look how creamy and nice that is. And what I like about this recipe, and I, I developed this recipe because I, the creaminess you see here is the creaminess I want to maintain throughout the whole recipe. So when it comes out the oven, I want it to be just as creamy. I don't want it dried out or uh, losing any of the sauces. So that's the wonderfulness about this recipe. Aside from the fact that you're using all vegetables, which is giving you added nutritional density uh, without added calories. Now, the calories for a serving of this is only is only about um, 136 per serving, and the fat content is about 2.4. Now, that's for some folks that oh, that's high. Forgive me. The sauce is delicious. Um, although it seems like it's high, the amount, the type, and the amount of fat that's in here is not compared to what you're going to get in a traditional macaroni and cheese, baked macaroni and cheese. Yes, there is some fat because we are using some coconut cream, and I did add a quarter stick of vegan butter. But what we need to remember is that the type of fat, because it's all plant-based. It is very good for you. The difference between plant-based fat and animal fat is that the animal fat is comprised of what's called a steric acid, whereas plant-based um, plant fats are comprised of palmatic acid. And the difference is the steric, the steric acid 
is um, when it hits the heat, it immediately forms free radicals. And we know that those are enemies for those of us who have a uh, history of cancer, because that's what leads to cancer development in the body. Whereas palmitic acid is very highly loaded with antioxidants. It is so highly loaded with antioxidants that it, the, it fights the formation of free radicals. So when you're cooking with plant-based um, oils, whether it's coconut oil or soy oil or any other plant-based oil, it, when it hits the heat, it actually prevents the formation of free radicals. So that makes it a much healthier fat. Although the best uh, plant-based um, fat would be olive oil. Um, with olive oil, you need to be careful because it still has the uh, antioxidant properties in it, but as it reaches higher temperatures, it starts to denaturize. So you'll want to use um, a lower heat. Now with this, because everything is cooked, we're just basically putting it in the oven to kind of solidify. Now, for just for show, I, I have made this and I've cooked it just as it is without anything on it, and it's wonderful. But just for show, because I like, we are we are doing this for show, I, I like to dust the top, and I do say dust because we don't want to use a lot, with a little bit of breadcrumb, and you want to make sure your breadcrumb you're using it, it is uh, it's vegan, it's vegan uh, breadcrumb. And if you happen to have it, and I do happen to have a little bit of vegan shreds, which I'm going to put on top. I don't always like to do this simply because for aesthetics, for me, it's pretty important. And I want to see the cheese melt. And not all the vegan cheese has a lovely melting uh, property. I'm gonna, this one is a new cheese to me, so I'm not sure how it melts. So we just, for the sake of, of aesthetics, we're going to put a little bit just on top, and we're ready to go into the oven. Now, the other part of our program today is we're making uh, what is called banana blossom fish, vegan fish. And it is, as its name suggests, made from banana blossom. When you're making the banana blossom, you need to use the ones that are in the can. You cannot use fresh banana blossom. You must use um, the ones that's in the can. When you open your can, you want to drain your blossoms and press them and then form them into the shape that you want. For this, I want to put on some gloves because it's a little messy, um, and I don't want to have to be um, washing my hands again and again. Whether you are making fish or you are frying anything, whether it's eggplant or whatever, this is the method that I like to use, which is a three-station uh, method. In my first station, you have flour. Uh, this is my egg station, which would be station number two. And then the last station, depending on what you're cooking, in this case because we're doing fish, I mean, this is half flour and half yellow cornmeal. Now, if you notice, you can see each station has been seasoned. And it's all seasoned with the same mix that I created. And this mix contains um, dulce, which is a, um, a red seaweed, and it is uh, antioxidant, and it um, is very good for you. And also nori. Nori is most commonly found. It is a, the seaweed that is used to make sushi. This also contains garlic powder, onion powder, uh, obey seasoning, and a little bit of salt. And what I have done is I have seasoned each one of the stations as well as seasoned our fish. Now this fish has been once breaded, so I'm not going to go through all of the stations on this one simply because um, I don't want to have too much of coating on it. But for the sake of frying, I'm going to put a little, just a little, just dust it very lightly with uh, the flour. And we're going to let our, we're going to let our oil come up to temperature. I'm old school. You, if you have a thermometer, then you want it up to about maybe 350. I don't use thermometers. My mother was old school. I use the old method of just sprinkling a little flour and washing it. So I am, um, because my oil, I used it earlier to fry our other, I'm going to 
just go ahead and let that see what it's going to do. While it's frying, I'm going to go ahead and get my steamer because we're going to have some steamed broccoli with our meal today. I'm going to go ahead and get back to that. Now, um, I've already, the water's nice and hot already, and I, what I did with my vegetables, which is what I often do to avoid over-salting, I had my fresh vegetables after I cleaned them, soaked them in some nice salt water. And what I like to do with the, um, what I like to do with my vegetables, because I don't like over-seasoning, and I like to steam them until they're just done. I will use a little non-stick butter, which has no adds no extra calories, but gives the flavor of butter to your vegetables. Just spray them, close with that, and let it do what it's going to do. So, and while we are waiting for everything to finish, I'm going to go check on my fish one more time. See if it, needs to be it doesn't take long, but I want it to cook thoroughly so that it will be cooked through. Really nicely. So that's when it takes you're gonna cook it probably three to four minutes on each side. John, you were right. <laughs> John, you were right. <laughs> so we're gonna you want it to cook about three to four minutes on each side. Um, you, I, you do want it to cook through uh, because you don't want it to be soft in the middle. Ordinarily, I would cook it to about this stage and then pop it in the oven. Um, but I'm gonna reduce our heat and I'm gonna let it cook a little bit longer because uh, I really want it to be cooked a little bit. So, um, in addition to what we're showcasing today, we have a special uh, dessert that I want to share with you. I call it my chai cafe. And this cafe um, was newly, um, thank you, was newly um, created to set those up. your cheese sauce, you can use that uh, to do that, which is how I use it. So with, this is what we're going to make to assemble now. And I just need a minute to organize everything. So the first component of our parfait is this pudding. And it is made of, this particular one uh, is made up of chai chopped chia seeds and I have thrown into this one also some hemp seeds as well as some flax seed. So this is a very potent um, pudding. It's very potent and very delicious. Now how you make the chai pudding is very simple. I use only for this amount which is enough to serve five I'm using uh, I use eight eight tablespoons of the seeds. Now you can use one or all of the seeds. I use all. But you don't have to. You can choose to use 
um, get your chia seeds. Into the five or eight tablespoons of chia seeds, I included for every four tablespoons, one half cup of plant-based milk. I use coconut milk because that's my favorite. But if you have a favorite, whether it's almond or combination, please feel free to use that. I sweetened this with just two tablespoons of maple syrup, that's the pudding, two tablespoons of maple syrup, some cinnamon, and a pinch, a very tiny pinch of salt, just to offset any sweet. Now this is our maple cream, and it is made using vegan cream cheese, vegan whipping cream, and maple syrup. And this is what we're going to use to sandwich between them. And of course, we have our other ingredients, which include our fruit, which we have macerated. Uh, and we have a, a mixture of berries, as well as some bananas, and black grapes, which I recently discovered, and I'm in love with them. There's weird looking grape that looks like everyone I've ever tried to give it to, they're afraid of, and including my grandsons, they're long, strange looking grapes, but they're absolutely delicious. Um, and if you ever happen to be lucky enough to see some at your local grocery store, by all means, be sure and get them, because they are just yummy. They're the grapes that are used to make raisins, so that tells you they're nice and sweet and lovely. Now, in terms of your parfait, how you, how you, what you decide to put in it is to your own taste. This parfait has, as you can see, has uh, almonds as well as pecans. But I have made it using um, just about every nut. Walnuts, whole almonds, uh, macadamia nuts, but pecans are my favorite, and that's what we have on hand, and so that's what we're going to do. And I thought it would be fun to have our guests make their own and you can you're not limited to just using these fruits you can also get creative i use uh, i put coconut in mine um, i don't do it for my children my grandchildren because they don't like coconut so all we're doing simply is we're going to lay down a layer of our pudding you know in our cup and we're then going to put down a layer of our cream. <laughs> then we do a layer of our fruit. But you can use your sweetener of choice. You can use agave nectar or honey. Um, and then I put on a layer of nuts. Um, very light layer, but it's to your taste. So if you choose that you want a lot of nuts or just a few nuts, then that's what you do. But I don't like a whole lot of nuts. The more nuts you use, the more uh, calories is going to be added to it. One serving of this is about 141 calories with just just the fruit and the light nuts. Then we're going to add another layer of the pudding. And my pudding is being naughty. It's trying to seep out, which is why I have it in the cup, because I knew it was going to do that. And this is a wonderful dessert. Kids love it. Um, in fact, someone came up with the idea, you know, like, and have created a whole franchise based on these little cups. They have uh, places we can go in and actually um, order what you want in it. I've had one where I've had Nutella and anything you want. You tell them what you want to go in it and they will do it. So then 
This is our final layer of fruit. We're going to add some fruit on top. And Another soupçon of nuts. Nuts have a very, they're very healthy, um, very healthy oil in them. They're essential. We need them. And finally, I'm going to top mine with just a dollop of our cream and a choice raspberry, and that is all we need. So now, this is another dessert, which is, like I said, it's easy, it's fun, kids love it. This is a lovely dessert to have on a Saturday night um, with your family. You can get together and get creative, and you can put whatever you want. You can make it sweet, you can make it savory, um, you can change up the fruit, you don't have to use berries, you can use mango, you can use peaches, whatever it is in your your uh, taste preference. So. I believe it's time to plate. This is a utter and complete meal. You don't need anything else. We have all your vitamins and protein. Even though we have fried our fish, it is not because we're dealing with, again, plant-based. You don't have to worry. So, as they say in Italy, manja. Thanks for coming, and um, I will have all the recipes that are featured here available for you, um, and any questions that you might have, we hope to answer them for you. Thanks for showing up in our kitchen, Manja. Wow, that was so delicious looking. <laughs> And I know it tasted good. But before we get into our questions and answer answers, um, I would again, thank everyone for uh, uh, coming on. And right now we're about to move into a question and answer segment of our program. So if you have any questions or something that you wasn't sure of, or just wanna ask, um, put your uh, question in the chat and uh, we'll be right back with the Q&A session. But before we get to the Q&A session, <clears throat> again, for those who came on a little bit later, a couple of things, we're having a program, Diabetes Undone, uh, and that information should be in the chat or if you can rechat it for uh, those who have not, uh, who wasn't on in the beginning. So we're having that program and it's gonna be a very, very important program. We all know of someone that may be borderline diabetic or have diabetes. I mean, it's a really, really uh, bad sickness. And, and um, uh, actually my mom had diabetes, but actually with the right treatment, she was able to come off all that medication that she was on. So we encourage you, if you don't know of anybody, please, if, no, if, you, if you're not diabetic, I'm sure you know of someone that may have diabetes, please pass this information on. It's in the chat and I'll ask uh, Merlene to put it back in the chat as well. Also too, we have some upcoming programs um, and they should be coming on your screen in a couple of seconds, but we are having some programs that will be coming up and I believe the next program is going to be on gardening. Yes, canning. We're talking because we had uh, the shepherds um, on a, a while ago, and they were talking about gardening and planting, and um, uh, along with some other people. And so we are um, bringing them back because now we're, we're rolling into the uh, cooler months and you know we're in fall now and then soon it's gonna be winter. And uh, how do you preserve these foods that you're growing? You know, And that's what we're gonna be talking about, prepping, uh, getting that uh, together um, and 
uh, storing them and preserving them. So you don't want to miss that. That's going to be two Tuesdays from today, two Tuesdays from today. And I believe we have a, um, there should be some uh, uh, flyers that should be popping up on your screen shortly here and um, to show you what we have coming up. Also too, um, in the chat was, in case you missed some of our programs uh, prior to today, we have, and it should be in the chat as well, a um, uh, website where you can, down, or you can download all the programs that we've put on so far. And it's on this website that you're looking at right now, uh, Empowerment for Health, uh, that's the website. Also, the next session, and this is what I was talking about here, um, uh, we, we, we're going to be talking about the preserving your food. And, um, and then November 16th, we're going to have another cooking demo, plant-based. So, and, and we're moving into that Thanksgiving season. So you definitely want to, to, to look at that one and invite your friends too. And then, as I mentioned before, Diabetes Undone, we're going, and that's going to be an eight week inter interactive session beginning October 4th. You don't want to miss that. This can save your life or someone else's life. So please, please, if, uh, if you know someone, let them know. And if, if uh, you want more information or want to talk to someone about it, put your name and email address in the chat box so that we can definitely get in contact with you. Or even if you just want to make sure that you're, you're a part of uh, our, the information that's going out and making sure that you, you know what, what we have coming up, please put your uh, name and email address in the chat box and we'll uh, get that information and um, uh, and make sure you, you you're on on uh, in in the know, stay in the know. Um, I see some questions coming in, and uh, have any recordings been deleted since you started? Not to my knowledge. We all of the recordings should be there, uh, and we we'll, we will we will double check for you, and um, so all of the information should be there. Okay, with that said, I hope you have some questions or if you have any questions, please type them in and Terry and Lydianne will go over those questions and, and um, hopefully we'll give you an answer. So I'm gonna turn the program back over to Terry and Lydianne. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> it was delicious, I saw it. So uh, I know uh, the participants have not yet started, but they appreciate, yeah, I, I saw it. So, but I, I have two concerns about the coconut oil and the yeast. You, for the coconut oil, most of the people are afraid to use it because of the saturated fat. What do you have to say about it, please? Um, I mentioned during the demo that the difference between the, the saturated fats that you have present in plant-based oils versus those that are in animal-based um, um, oils is that the saturated fat that you have in coconut oil is a steric acid. Um, I'm sorry, is a palmatic acid. And the, as I mentioned in the, in the video, palmatic acid has very high levels of antioxidants. That's your vitamin E. And those there's so many antioxidants in, in the palmitic acid that it actually prevents the formation of uh, free radicals, which is what we want. We don't wanna have free radicals rolling around uh, bodies because they are associated with uh, the, the uh, formation of cancer, cancerous cells. And that's the difference. When you are looking for an oil to add to a recipe or to cook with, you want to uh, steer clear of any animal-based oils. That includes butter, uh, uh, lard, or any other uh, animal-based uh, product. You want to use 
uh, plant-based. There is an oil that's on the market that I will not touch um, under any circumstances. Uh, it is man-made. And uh, the body doesn't always know what to do with man-made things. And when it gets in your body, because the body's not sure what to do, it stores it as fat because it doesn't, it can't process. The body's made to process carbs. And if it's not a carb, it's not um, something that the body can use, it will often store whatever it doesn't recognize as fat. And you don't, I don't want anything adding to my body to, uh, in terms of fat. I'm trying to get rid of as much fat as possible. So <laughs> I don't want anything being stored as fat. And that oil is the canola oil. That is a man-made oil. I would advise you to stay away from it. Um, it is not a good oil to use. Um, always reach for a plant-based oil. And um, soybean oil or um, vegetable oil is generally available and it's inexpensive. So uh, if you don't want to use coconut oil, you can always use some other uh, plant-based oil, but avoid um, animal and man-made oils. Now you asked Thank me you. another question about the yeast. Uh, the yeast. I'm sorry. The, the yeast. yeast. Oh, yeast. nutritional yeast. There are some people that have issues uh, either medically or just they're not comfortable with the yeast. And if you don't want to add the nutritional yeast um, to your recipe, you don't have to. The nutritional yeast adds a, a cheese taste to the finished product. But in this particular recipe, if you don't want to add the, the nutritional yeast, because I've made it without the nutritional yeast, mm -hmm. uh, I just adjust the amount and the, um, of um, other ingredients that I add to it to give it that same, um, get that same uh, cheesy taste. Um, you want to increase the amount of fresh garlic you add, the ground mustard and um, add a little bit more lemon juice. Um, the garlic cheese, as we know, has a kind of a funky kind of taste that comes as a result of aging the milk products. And that you can get that same kind of funky um, flavor on your palate by adding additional garlic. Um, the must, the ground must adds an earthiness that, and, uh, that you one and the lemon lemon juice gives that tanginess that you get from the cheese. So simply by adjusting your ingredients to suit your taste, you can achieve the same effect, effect without the nutritional yeast. Yeah, there, there is this question about the nutritional yeast if it can be replaced by onion or garlic powder. Definitely, as I said, um, the difference is, I as you notice, I cook with fresh as well as dried. And that's mm -hmm. because they taste different. Onion powder mm -hmm. does not taste like fresh onion. Mm -hmm. Garlic powder does not taste like fresh garlic. Right. It, there's a difference. And so if you're trying to achieve the effect that you're getting from the nutritional yeast, you don't want to use the powders. You want to use the fresh vegetable. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to adjust it, use fresh onion, fresh garlic. Don't use the powder because it will. you'll never get the, achieve the same uh, um, taste on your palate as you would if you use the powder. Yeah. But so you definitely want to add both. Definitely add both. It brings a more rounded uh, flavor to the, to the, um, to the, uh, uh, to the sauce. Now I will yeah. tell you the good thing about this sauce, you can use it if you like to do nachos, you can do the same thing, use the same thing, just add a little bit of um, either pimento um, or roasted red pepper to give mm. you that nacho flavor and a little bit of heat at, to your, your preference. If you want to add a little um, white pepper or a little bit of red pepper to it, of course, the pimento will add some heat uh, and, and it'll make a nice um, nacho sauce as well. Thank you. So uh, talking about the, the fish, Banana mm -hmm. blossom. Can it be air fried? And where can you buy it? The banana blossom. Okay. Now, the banana blossoms are pretty well uh, available. I have found them in international markets. I also have purchased them on Amazon. Uh, the cheapest place I found here of late is Lata Market. And you can get um, 
get a can for about $2 at a lot of markets. It's usually found in the Korean section of the marketplace. And there are a lot of markets all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the uh, a lot of people ask if you can use, why do you have to get the canned one? Because the fresh one is, is um, very stiff from the cellulose from the plant, because it's a plant. And you're not going to be able to to work with it at all. So you do need to get the can and use the can banana blossom. Someone had asked me if they could use jackfruit. Jackfruit is totally different. I don't do a lot of cooking with jackfruit. It tends to be a little too fruity in its flavoring. And I can't imagine it as a substitute in this particular recipe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where can, 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 can we buy it? No, uh, again, no, no, no. Yeah, you, you, you have answered the question. Sorry. Yes. It was, can we uh, put the fish, uh, can, can the fish oh, be air fried? Fry, air, air fry? I have not, I don't have an air fryer. My, and, and I know I have family members who do. And mm-hmm. I can, I used to have an air fryer. My problem with the air fryer was um, it's, it's like baking it. So if you're going to bake it, um, I can imagine you probably could bake it. What I would suggest is uh, you're not, it's not going to be the same because it won't have the crunch like you're going to get from frying it. Yeah. Um, I would suggest you spray it because most of the time in air fryers, they do suggest you spray it with a little oil on the outside. That's so that you can achieve some type of crunchiness. But I mean, try it. If it if you spray it with the oil and it works, that's wonderful. That saves you mm-hmm. some calories and uh, it gives you a little uh, freedom because with the air fryer you don't have to stand over it and babysit it while you're cooking it. But yeah, it's very um, important if you're using the can uh, that you squeeze um, the when you you drain it and then squeeze it when you uh, get it and you want to squeeze out the liquid because the excess liquid will keep your fillets from crisping up during the process, the frying process. And also if you leave too much brine, the brine can sometimes have a strange or peculiar taste. And if you don't, if you don't get uh, as much of the brine out as you can, it will make your fillet, uh, your fillets taste a little strange possibly. But um, now, as I said in the video, I did season my fillets before I breaded them. So, and I do recommend you do that um, because then you're getting layers upon layers of the flavor um, and it's more, it tastes better. So I will say that after that filming, I took uh, extra fillets to my uh, relative's house who are not Uh, plant-based eaters. And my family member remarked, oh, wow, it tastes like salmon. (laughs) And um, I have prepared this this filet for avid fish fans, Mm -hmm. uh, including my son, who Mm -hmm. is not, he is a meat eater. And he was totally, completely fooled by it. He did not know it wasn't fish. And he actually came back and asked me to make some more of that fish. And I said, no problem. I'll be happy to make you some more of that fish. Even though I did tell him it wasn't fish, it, he was totally confused by it because he mm. didn't recognize it. So if you if you are just transitioning to a plant-based diet or you're working with someone who is, uh, one of the most off-putting things about a plant-based diet is that the food, I, the plenty I hear is it all tastes the same. Well, no one wants to eat the same thing every night. So you want your food to not only uh, be nutritious, you want it to be appealing and tasty. So you will want to season this as if you were seasoning fish that was just caught out in the sea. So it's just as you would not take a piece of fish uh, out of the freezer or from the sea and just put it in the pan and fry it or put it in the oven. You don't want to do this with your banana blossoms. You must mm-hmm. must uh, season it as well. Yeah, thank you, Chef. And I think Veronica wanted to know if it is possible to have a picture of the blossom, the banana blossom can that you use. I don't well, know. Well, I would if I had known Veronica, I would have bought one with me here, but I 
I don't think that's a good idea because I have banana blossoms. As I said, I've gotten them from Amazon. I've gotten them at the local lotter market. I've gotten them at the super, um, super best market. And each one of them is different. So um, get down to the, clo the closest um, Asian in international market you can. If you, if you can't find them, just ask. Because if you go into the market, like the last ones I bought, the writing will be in, in a language that you probably, uh, unless you have uh, some uh, background, you won't be able to read it. I know I can't, but I recognize it by looking at the picture. And a lot of times it'll say a, a banana blossom on the label. So, and you can ask at the customer service desk, which is what I did this last time, because it's the first time I purchased it there and I wasn't sure they had it. And I didn't want to be roaming up and down the aisles looking for it. And I went to the customer service desk and I asked for banana blossoms in the can. You want to make sure you specify in the can because a lot of the mm -hmm. international markets will carry frozen ones, which are fresh frozen, or they'll have the, um, the fresh ones and you can't use either one of them. So... Oh, I see it. Um, okay. And each label is different. Um, so I'm really, really sorry. I wish I had a can with me. I just prepared my last can of banana blossoms a week ago. So I don't have any, any cans. I don't know if anybody else has one that might be able to share. Um, mm. I know that Google, I'm sorry. I know that Amazon does have it and they have different cans. So the label look different, but you can find banana blossoms. You can Google it and put banana blossoms yeah. and hopefully that'll, that'll help you find it. But I know if you in the neighborhood where there's a Lotta, L-O-T-T-E market, they have it. That's the cheapest place I found them at. Um, and I've also purchased them at Super Best uh, Supermarket, which is a Korean market. And um, they have them. Uh, so they seem to be pretty available. They, for years, the Chinese um, and Korean, as well as the other Asian um, communities have been eating these as a substitute for fish. Something that I was surprised, but not shocked to learn when I first was introduced to them, that they have been eating these banana blossoms as fish as an alternative to fish for many, many, many years. So they're commonly known within that those communities and you shouldn't have any trouble finding them in any local Asian market. Well, thank you, Chef. <laughs> many information, yeah. Now it's really important that if you're gonna make the fillets that you have uh, nori or dose or both. There we go, yes. Because, so because my next question was on nori and, and dulce, yeah. Great. So nori and dulce are really what gives the uh, blossom their fish-like taste, along with the seasonings. Now I used um, onion and garlic powder, as well as some um, Old Bay seasoning. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives it a very um, fish-like taste. But the nosi and the, nor the, the dulce and the nori, nori. Um, they actually are your secret for any of your seafood recipes and whether you're making a vegan seafood pasta, fish cakes, or um, these, because um, what they are, they're actually live. They sell them yeah. live. I think, yeah, that's the thing. Are you seeing, are you seeing the can there? I see someone is asking about kelp. Yeah, that's, that's the can of the banana. Um, yeah. I have never used kelp. Sea kelp has a different taste altogether. And so I don't know how it would taste. I encourage people to be creative. And if you happen to have some sea kelp and you want to add it in place of, try it. And, and please let me know how it, it works. Kelp is very, like both of these um, uh, seaweeds, because that's what they are. They are very high in iron and vitamin C, antioxidants. Mm -hmm. They have soluble as well as insoluble fiber, okay. vitamin K, vitamin uh, B12, and a range of other nutrients. The red seaweeds, like the dulce, is high in protein. Nori is very rich in protein as well, and it's full of omega-3 fatty acids, which you know are really good for, uh, for you. 
and help in, in the fighting of cancer. And it's very high in, in fiber. In fact, one sheet of, of nori has as much fiber as a whole cup of spinach. So it's they're very good for you. And kelp, as we have known for years, is very good for you too. So if the kelp is, if you have that on hand, you want to try it and it, it does add to that recipe, please let me know. I'd love to, um, to uh, try it myself. Okay. Thank you. And I think, uh, Verinta, I think you are seeing the, the can there. Yeah. Yes, that's a okay, can. Thank, thank you. you for that. That's yes, one, that is one can, but that looks like it's sliced. Um, uh, and if it's sliced, that your fillets are going to be flat, um, but you can still work with it. Uh, if you want it to be more looking like a fish fillet, you mm -hmm. want to get the ones that are quartered. And you'll sh they'll show you on the on the front of the package quarter. That brand I've seen, but I've never used it because it looks sliced, and I didn't. I, I don't like the slices, so I usually get another brand. But thank you so much, Everton, for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. You like me show mine, Sister Cherry? Oh, that'd be great. Okay, I sent you a message. I, I guess you didn't get it yet. No, I didn't see it. Yeah. Can you see it? Okay, yeah. Now that one I have used before and that one's a good one. And it's a very common brand. And you can see on the yeah. front that they are shaped in quarters as opposed to sliced. And um, that's what you want. You want the quarters, not the slices mm -hmm. because to get the realistic fish um, shape, uh, you want to have it uh, like that in the quarters. I think Veronica has seen it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Brother John. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Chef, we still have our dessert with Chia Perfect. Yes. Yeah. And you use uh, the, the flax seed, the, the Chia seed. And what about if someone is not comfortable or want to add other seeds, what about it? What can you give us advice? I do recommend, yes, you can use other seeds. In fact, in that recipe, I use the combination of hemp, flax, and chia. Okay. But you can use one or all of them. Um, and those are the ones that I primarily stick with because when what they all have in common is that when you combine those three with liquid, whether it's water or milk, they, gel, they become gelatinous. And that's what forms the pudding. Uh, some of the other seeds, their um, their um, hull is too thick and it doesn't break down in the liquid. So um, I would recommend that you use one or any combination of those three to make your um, your pudding. Now, if you're going to add um, one of these, bear in mind that it can and usually will change the taste the overall taste of your pudding, because the hemp and the particularly hemp has a very strong, almost pungent uh, taste to it. So the best way to figure that out is just to, you know, put a couple of seeds in your mouth and chew them up and see what's coming through. Yeah, um, black seeds are usually pretty neutral and that's why they're used often as a substitute for like eggs in recipes. Uh, because they're pretty neutral in taste. The lighter the flaxseed, the better, um, especially if you have a problem with aesthetics and you don't like the change of the coloring. The chia seeds give, because they're black, and I use a mixture of white and black chia seeds, um, because they're black ones. If you notice the, the um, pudding had a, a kind of a grayish tint, that's because of the black chia seeds. If you don't want to use the black chia seasoning, that's coloring, it's off-putting for you, then just use all white uh, chia seeds. It's really often hard to find the all white ones. Uh, most commonly you find them mixed, the white and the black. So mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it because what you can do, an alternative to putting the fruit on top, you can put some of the pudding in a blender and you can add the fruit to it and mix it in that way. And then the color of your fruit will color your pudding. So it's up to you if that color is off putting in any way, that's a suggestion. Um, and then, um, but I would not recommend any other seeds other than the hemp, the flax and the chia. 
Yeah, I think Veronica is coming back again to ask what the banana blossom exactly fruits. How is it related to our American yellow banana? It's it's from that tree. The blossoms is what you get before you get the fruit, as you know, in any any plant. You get blossoms and then the blossoms die off and the fruit takes its place. So the blossom actually comes uh, before you get the fruit. And that's why they're so nutritious because you're getting all of those nutrients that you would have gotten in your banana with your potassium and all of that. So yeah, it's the same plant. Yeah. And she also asked if you are eating seed, then it's best to grind them fresh before placing them on your salads. Nutrients um, are available when the seed I, is broken. The, the smaller seeds like the chia seeds, the flax seeds and the hemp, mm -hmm is not really necessary to grind them up. Um, I grind them only if I'm planning on using them as a substitute for eggs in a recipe. I do baking as well. And I do vegan baking. And um, in, as a substitute for the eggs in my baking recipes, I will use ground flax, ground chia, ground hemp, hemp or I'll use um, applesauce and some other things that I use as a substitute. The, that's the only time I grind them, but you're because they're so tiny and they're so eat water friendly, uh, and they they actually kind of the reason why you get that gelatinous effect after adding them to liquid is because they're breaking down. And because they break down in a in a fluid environment, they're easily processed in your body, so it's not necessary to grind them. But if if you feel comfortable and you, know, you have some medical um, you know, situation where it's necessary for you to grind them, then by all means, please grind them. Yeah, and it won't right. make any difference. If, to, in, if you're making your pudding, all it will mean is that, uh, and you're using ground seeds versus the whole seeds, which is what I did, it'll just mean your pudding will set up quicker. Okay. Yeah. I, I have one question coming from one of my relatives about the, the sugar in the chia perfect. For someone who is suffering for, from diabetes, is it good for him to take that type of dessert? As you can, yes. As you can see in the, the um, recipe that I use in this one and the previous one, I stay away from using processed sugars. Yeah. Um, I traditionally will use um, agave nectar or maple syrup or honey. Mm -hmm. Honey is the last on the list. <laughs> it is a natural. It is not. Um, uh, I, it is not a processed sugar. And for those of you who are dealing with diabetes, agave nectar is always recommended because you get it's low on the glycemic uh, index, and so it does not cause your blood sugar to spike like processed sugar will. So. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are diabetic and you want to prepare these and these, this dessert, I recommend number one, that dessert that I made is very diabetic friendly because you're using berries, which are also low on the, di on the uh, glycemic index. You're using alternative sweeteners. And usually when I make that, I use agave, but I was all out of agave. So I use one of my other alternatives with, in this case, happen to be maple syrup. Um, also that is low on the glycemic index and you're adding nuts, uh, fiber, which are your fiber. And as you know, fiber is your friend. If you're diabetic, it's your friend because fiber slows the intake of insulin into your bloodstream, which keeps you from experiencing those spikes that you would get if you, um, because you're diabetic and your blood sugar is not, is not, um, is not leveled. So it's a very diabetic friendly dessert. Also the cream that I, I used in the parfait, you don't, if you don't have that cream, by all means, don't go out buying um, anything to make it. You can enjoy that parfait without it, just with the nuts and the fruit. And it's equally delicious mm -hmm. and it's equally it, it, um, nutritious. In fact, you cut a few calories by cutting out the cream. The, um, the cream in it. So just the fruit and the pudding on its own is filling, is satiating, and it's very good. Right, right. Thank you. I think Veronica is 
no, it's not Veronica, it's from Reynolds. If you can get the fresh banana blossom, how will you prepare it to get to what is in the tin? Mm. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I've never worked with the fresh banana blossom, but it is what it is, a blossom. What I, I think what you would have to do, because it's in the can and it's brined, you would have to brine it, and then you would have to boil it and cook it. Because mm -hmm. anything in a can, as you may or may not know, is cooked. It's part of the process, the canning process. And if you do mm -hmm. home canning, if you know anything about home canning, you're actually putting the things into the containers and you're cooking them in the container. That's how you seal the container. So I would say, I would say if you are adventurous and creative and you want to try using the fresh banana blossom, then um, that's what you would have to do. First of all, you'll want to brine it. And if you know brining, uh, a good brine, you can look it up on the internet. I, when I brine my stuff, it depends on what I'm brining. Um, mm -hmm. When I used to eat meat, I would brine my meats because it adds flavor. Uh, I always brine my vegetables because I don't want to oversalt them. And a good way to keep from oversalting them because I'm very conscious of salt um, is I brine, I brine them or soak them in a little salted water. That way I control the amount of salt and then I don't have to add any salt at the end of the process. So, um, cause it comes out perfectly salted. So you'll want to brine it and cook it until it's nice and tender. Um, and then, then you'll go through the process of breading it and frying it. But save yourself some trouble cause you can get a can, a can of, of uh, banana blossoms for $2. And that will save you a whole lot of trouble if you can get to a local Asian market and get them. Um, I will tell you the most expensive ones I purchased were from Amazon. So I don't recommend getting them unless you just want to have a whole case of banana blossom um, and you, you know, you can afford it, then go for it. But if you're like me and you're on a budget, uh, go to your local, local um, Asian market and pick up a couple of cans. I would, I haven't checked but I believe they also have them in the Indian markets too. But someone can check that out and let me know because um, banana blossoms, are, and then I'm sure you'll find them in the African markets too um, because they're pretty common and they, you know, well-known in the culinary world. They've been around for years, so it's nothing new. Right, we still have another question. What can one use in place of jelly? Jelly. In place, of, in place of jelly? Yes. In which recipe are we talking about? She's not talking about any recipe, maybe a substitute, I don't know, of jelly. I, I, I didn't use any jelly. jelly, so I don't know. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, a substitute of jelly. If I want to use uh, some jelly in something, Oh, I see. You're at, it's just a general question. You want to use, yeah. say, like yes. on your toast? Yes. I like honey on my toast. <laughs> <laughs> so honey is nice. Um, um, apple butter. As a kid, my mom used to put apple butter on, on our toast. Mm -hmm. um, apple butter is nice because it's made with apples and you get some fiber from there. Um mm -hmm. I like honey, as I said, just a little honey on my toast. It's very common. I think it's a very British thing. I don't um, know when I became such an Anglophile, but I believe honey is very, very English uh, to have honey on the toast, but I like it. So <laughs> I'm talking about a jelly that crystallizes, that one which you can use to mix with some something to make a dessert. A jelly? Yeah. Okay. What do we use in gelatin to make oh, it? Oh, you mean life? like a gel, oh, that type of gel. Yeah. Um, I, the only thing I've ever used in place of a gel, like for that, like if I'm making um, a pudding, like say, like when I make banana, my vegan banana pudding, I use cornstarch um, oh, to, <laughs> to, gel it, to gel it and set it. Um, okay. There are a number of agar. Agar is another thing that it's not always easy to find, but you can. That's a good substitute too. That's a vegetable plant-based gelatin. It's called agar okay. agar, and you can usually find it at the Asian markets as well. But it's not always readily available. 
Um, oh. I would recommend, depending on what you're making, if you're making, like I said, like a banana pudding or some other type of pudding, to thicken it, I would yeah. use cornstarch. If you're making um, like a gelatin type yeah. dessert, then you will probably want to use agar or visit your local um, health food store and find some um, uh, vegan jelly, jello. They okay. do sell it. They do okay. sell it. It's called, there's one brand in particular called Gelwell. Now, I will tell you, Gelwell has been around for as long as I've been here. And I never see it in stores anymore. I have found it online occasionally, but it's very expensive because it's considered vintage. <laughs> and I guess that makes me vintage. <laughs> so yeah. it's hard to find. Um, but you can visit a local health food store and you should be able to find uh, a, a vegan jello um on the, on the shelves i've okay. seen it i don't bother with it but well i think uh, that it, that is good enough because i i would love to use something that crystallizes with the uh, with fruits and not oh if you're making the jelly and you want to use something other than jello yeah. you can use um pectin. pectin and it depends on the fruit that you're making your Gel, uh, your jelly with. There's some fruits that are very high in pectin and some are not. And some fruits, if they're very high in pectin, you don't even really need to add any pectin. But you can go into, um, usually you can find it at uh, uh, like uh, either a gourmet shop or they used to sell the pectin at the um, hardware stores okay. uh, where you find the canning jars and all of that. But yeah, pectin is a very good substitute for gel, for the um, gel, okay. and it's especially good for fruits. Yeah, thank you so much because I know my, I used to use uh, gelatin, but uh, yeah. I want to do something different. Yes, pectin will do it, and agar agar will also do it for you. And uh, if you can't find any of those, just go um, to your local health food store and get some um, vegan jello. Okay. Because they okay. do sell the gelatin powder. Vegan jello. That's what mm -hmm. I want. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. And also it said here in the chat, arrowroot powder is more healthier than cornstarch. Yeah. Yes. Arrowroot powder is uh, more, um, it is more healthier. Uh, if you can't find the arrowroot, you can use cornstarch. But I don't recommend using cornstarch for gel jelly. Mm -hmm. I would recommend uh, agar agar or the other things I told you, the pectin and whatnot. The cornstarch is good or arrowroot mm -hmm. is good for things like pudding, like mm -hmm. banana pudding, vanilla pudding, um, or anything. If you're making a, um, if you, yes, that's correct, uh, Dana. A agar agar is available on Amazon. Okay. Um, Thank you. That's nice. Good if job. you're making like a, um, a pudding, or a pudding type like pie, say like a custard type pie, like a custard cream or um, some other uh, lemon meringue pie, which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to make me a nice vegan lemon meringue pie, I will be happy and you'll have a friend for life. I love lemon meringue. So um, if you're making that type of custardy in, um, dish, I recommend arrowroot or cornstarch. The arrowroot is a lot more um, pungent and stronger than the um, cornstarch, so you don't need to use as much as you would with the cornstarch. Thank, right. thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you also, Chef. Yeah, we are just moving slowly to the end. Mac and cheese, fish fillet, yeah, perfect. We thank. We thank our chef for this recipe. And now we... I want to share my screen for just a second because yes. I put in the chat my email. If you want any of these recipes or any of the others that have been featured, uh, you need to email me and I'll send you the recipe. I want to share the screen just so that you can see um, at the top of the screen if I can get it to share. Let's see. Um, I tell you what, I'm just going to put it back in the chat because I don't want to waste the time because we got so much to get through today, uh, this evening. I don't want to rob time from anybody else. I am going to, actually, I'm going to, uh, I'm just putting it in right now. 
Uh huh. If I can, let me go to my big screen. There we go. Okay, so now let me put this in the chat so that um, if you want any of those, please feel free to send them. Send your email to me yeah. and, and your, what it is you're requesting. If you just send me your email, I won't know which recipes that you want. So okay. it's very easy to remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there the um, it's there you go. Yeah. Okay. And I made it, I think I made a mistake. There's not three hours in Terra. There's only two. So <laughs> but everything else was correct. It's Terra yeah. 62 Robins at gmail.com. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Chef, any last word before we hand the, the floor to Adamant? Any last word? I did want to, I, I, I'm going to try to do this again. I want to share the nutritional information as we're transitioning. I'm going to show, share my screen with you so that you can see um, the nutritional facts on the mac and cheese as well as on the blossom. And what I've done with yeah. this. Uh, as you can see, I don't know, can you see that, the whole thing? Yes. yes. So as you can see, the differences between the uh, the amount, this is the mac and cheese, and you see you have 100, only 136 calories in the serving versus almost double that in the, uh, actually more than double that for traditional mac, uh, baked macaroni and cheese, as mm. is the amount of fat is doubled. And bear in mind, our fat, which is at 2.4, is all plant-based. So you're going to get the benefit of all those wonderful antioxidants floating around. Whereas in the traditional, because the cheese is animal-based, you're going to be getting a lot of free radicals. And in addition to that, you're going to be getting a great deal of other nutrients like um, magnesium, calcium, I'm sorry, magnesium and, and um, vitamins. Also, the amount of sodium is much less in our uh, plant-based mac and cheese versus the, um, the uh, traditional mac and cheese. I'm going to switch over quickly to the banana blossom, if it's going to cooperate with me. No, nope, that's not it. So let's go use this one. There we go. So if you look at the banana blossom versus traditional fried fish, and I use the white fish because mm -hmm. that's the most common fish that's used. If you were to go into a restaurant or go to a fast food place and ask for fried fish fillet, you would usually get a white fish. And in the traditional, um, in the traditional white fish, fried white fish, you see the calories look kind of high. But when mm -hmm. you look at it, it's actually showing 60 calories more for the banana blossom. But look at what you're getting as opposed to with all you're going to get from your traditional white fish is lots of fat, lots of salt, excuse and not me, much more. Excuse me, Chef. Yes. I, I, I think you, the screen there, you're not sharing it. We, we still have the, the mac and cheese and nutritional. Well, I'm sorry. Let me close that one out because I am showing... Um, the banana blossom on mine. I apologize. Let me get rid of that. Go away. Are you seeing it now? No, you're not because it's not. No. So let me try to share it again. Okay. I'm getting messages on my screen that's interfering. Uh, so come on. There we go. All righty. So um, let me make this big enough so everybody can see. And um, as you can see, you're getting, as I said, with a traditional fish, fried fish, you're going to get lots, you're going to get a lot of, um, of um, you're getting uh, about 60 calories less, mm -hmm. but you're getting much higher fat, you're getting much higher um, sodium, you're getting, um, you're getting also higher, um, uh, sodium and fat and cholesterol. Whereas with the banana blossom, yes, you're getting a few more calories and that's because uh, carbs have more calories than, um, 
than traditionally carbs have more calories than protein. And so you're getting it because we're doing plant-based. And mm -hmm. even though you have this three point, look at the differences in fat. You're getting 13 grams of fat. And remember that's animal fat, which means you're getting a whole, whole lot of radicals. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the blo banana blossom, you're only getting three grams of fat and this is plant-based fat. So while um, their saturated fat here is, is uh, 25% at 2.9, our saturated is only 0.4. So it's basically zero saturated fat. You know what else you get in zero? Cholesterol, no cholesterol. The sodium here is, is uh, in the regular um, traditional fried fish is 244 milligrams. And here it's showing at four, four, um, four, it's 59 because it's been brined. Um, but that still only represents 0.1% of the amount of daily uh, recommended amount. You're getting um, high potassium, you're getting high fiber in the, in the, um, in the uh, banana blossom, you're getting um, a little magnesium, you're getting some vitamin B12, you're getting thiamine, you're getting um, uh, magnesium. Or manganese, whereas you're getting none of that with your traditional uh, white fish. So overall, it, even though there's some areas where it might seem to be superior, it is um, not simply because um, the areas in which they, we are selling are the areas that mean the most. You're going to get uh, more bang for your butt. You're getting all of those antioxidants uh, because you're staying plant based. And if you get a few more calories, it's okay because you make up for it with the uh, less calories that you would get from your mac and cheese, which only gives you 136 calories per serving. So eating them together, you're still getting only roughly about 500 with the parfait, roughly about five to 600 calories for the full meal. Whereas you're getting just from the mac and cheese alone on that traditional meal and the fish alone without counting the dessert you're getting more than that. So you're getting more out of fiber, you're getting more nutrients and you're getting a healthier uh, benefit from the plant-based. Right, right. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, thank you, Linda. Blessed day for that below. Oh, uh, it is early hours there in South Africa. Thank you, Linda. Wow, what a great sacrifice you did. Yeah. I thank you, everybody Linda. for joining us. I look yes. forward to see you at the next one. Yeah, thank you, Chef. And yeah, and that you have the Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. I, I didn't I didn't think it was that much information in food. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how can you talk so long about that? But it's just really, really good information. So thank you so much, Terry. So with that, I will close with the word of prayer. Father, once again, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for just so much information that you've given us to live a healthier and happier life. Uh, as the, the, the statement says, let food be your medicine without, and I'm adding this, without the side effects, without the side effects, it's just so much we can do to create the atmosphere in our body so that our body can work to its optimum. And you've given us that information. Help us to take this information, and use it, and then share with others. Until we can meet again, we thank you, Lord, for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, the, uh, up. Uh, the, the thing is up. So if you can fill that out for us, we would appreciate it. And we will see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>